everybody, it's Deb Luttrell with Stitch in Heaven, and I'm here with my friend Dana. Dana is our cruise director on our cruises, and we have been sewing away this weekend and talking about cruising and all the different things that go on on cruises, and we, we were kind of talking about, you know, there's a few mistakes that people make before they go on their quilting cruise, and we decided that we would tell you guys about these things so that we we can help you have the most enjoyable most amazing trip ever when you come on a quilting cruise with us uh, there's actually we've been on about 75 cruises since uh, 2010 yes. so we've seen it all and we've um, learned a lot along the way and that's why we want to talk to you about it today um, I'm gonna start First of all, I think one of the most common things that people do that uh, they shouldn't do is that they book their flight the day of the cruise. Mm -hmm. Don't ever do that, you guys. You know, the best thing to do, I don't care if you're even in the same state <laughs> as your cruise is leaving out of, go ahead, plan to travel the day before, find a hotel, book a hotel, spend the night, and then you have a nice leisurely trip to the port and you can get there on time and you're not stressed out. And because there's so many things that can happen with the airlines and you just cannot predict. And even though you're in an area that maybe has good weather, you never know the weather between here and there, what that's like and how it can delay flights. So go ahead and just book that flight ahead of time and plan to be at the port, you know, as early as you can to get on board. So that's first thing. Absolutely. And something else that is a common mistake that people make is they wait until they get on board the ship to book their excursions. You know, let's say you're going into Bonaire or you're going to Aruba and what you really want to do is ride the Segways. And then you wait and you get on board and Segway tours are all booked up. So you don't get to do your first choice of your adventure. Those can be booked online through Royal Caribbean. It's usually, gosh, 90 days, sometimes I think it's even, 90 days. Yeah. You just kind of have, to, when you uh, make your reservation, you need to go ahead and look at all the excursions at all the ports. Um, there are... Also, uh, ways that you can do excursions outside of Royal Caribbean, we don't necessarily recommend that because Royal Caribbean will always wait for your excursion should traffic hold you up or something happen and you're running late. Uh, the ship will not leave you if you're on a Royal Caribbean excursion. We cannot say that if you booked independently. Because they don't know where you are. They don't know where you are. Yeah. They just know you didn't make it back in time. So look at all the excursions. Not Make your uh, time off the ship exactly what you want to do. All right, the next thing I would say is intentionally breaking the rules. That is a mistake Ooh. that people make. Whether it's you think, well, what are, what are rules that I could break? Well, uh, smoking on your balcony, uh, skipping mustard drill, um, mm -hmm. any other clearly stated rule that you choose to ignore just because uh, you want to have fun is could really, really get you into mm -hmm. trouble and make your cruise vacation not be very enjoyable. They've got a thing that's called the brig, <laughs> and you might get thrown in the but, brig. But we've not seen it personally. No, no, I've never seen the brig. <laughs> Actually, I haven't ever seen the brig. We should go see that I sometime on one of our future trips. Uh, just, just as a tour, mm -hmm. not, not get put in it. Yeah, yeah, just as a tour. <laughs> but the main thing to remember is that the rules on board the ship are there for a reason, and they're there, there you, to keep you safe. They're not there to keep you from having a good time, and you just really have to abide by them. Uh, if you smoke, there's a smoking section for you to, to do that. Um, just, you know, be smart, follow the rules, have a good time, have fun. Yes, and we always have a good time. 
Uh, another thing that you always want to keep track of is the time to get back on the ship. When you're at a port, there's always a back on board time. That's very important to be back on board by that time. Give yourself an extra hour in there. Again, the lines can be long coming back when you're uh, reboarding a ship. Give yourself some time to make it through those lines. Um, it has happened before where some of our quilters didn't make it back and the ship did leave. And they're probably watching this video. Hi girls. <laughs> so we have experience of that and it's not something that you want to repeat. Also, it's a captain's decision on whether we stay on ship time or port time. So that is very important on everybody's smartphones, smart watches. You need to make sure that if the captain has said we're staying on ship time, that it doesn't matter what the island time says. You have to be on ship time. That is when the ship is really going to leave. Mm -hmm. So watch those smartphones sometimes get us in trouble. And that back on board time will be posted right mm -hmm. as you leave the ship. Mm -hmm. So you can look for that every time if you, if you forgot to look for it in your cruise compass or... Or you or, didn't hear the... 15 to 20 announcements that have been made <laughs> over the loudspeaker telling you what time to be back on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, another mistake is not putting your phone on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. We try to remind you of this uh, in the welcome meeting, but if you miss the welcome meeting for whatever reason, I guess that would be another mistake is not if, is, is missing, is the, missing welcome the welcome meeting. Welcome meeting. Um, but you want to make sure that you get that that phone on airplane mode so that you don't have any unexpected charges when you get back to the the ship. Um, you can switch your phone over to airplane mode to avoid confusing the cellular network. Um, you know, if you, there is Wi-Fi on board the ship and you can purchase Wi-Fi if you want to. Can you get calls through the ship Wi-Fi? Yes. If if your <clears throat> excuse me, if your home uh, carrier has internet calling on it, and I know from experience Verizon and AT and T do, but you would need to check with your carrier prior to boarding the ship and make sure. That the international calls are on. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to be on airplane mode and connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. That's the only way it's gonna work. Which there's a fee for that. Yes. So, but it's uh, sometimes very much worth it to stay in touch. Mm -hmm. um, some people do a little bit, you know, have a little work vacation and they do some work. Um, but if you wanna stay in touch, when you have Wi-Fi, you also have with the two major, um, Verizon and AT&T are the only ones that we know for sure, but we do know about those. It's called, um, what is it called? Verizon. Wi-Fi calling. Wi-Fi calling. VCW. Yeah. VCW is a code that will be showing up mm -hmm. on your phone. Mm -hmm. Very handy to have. Uh, another thing that is very important to look at. Stitch in Heaven offers multiple quilting cruises. So you might look through and you think, well, this one's cheaper than the other one. I'll go on it. But there's so many other things to consider when you're booking a quilting cruise. Number one is look at the projects. Are these projects that you will enjoy making, that you like the techniques, you like the fabrics? Um, and then second to that, or however you want to prioritize it, is who is teaching them those projects. We have a lot of our cruisers who have become fast friends with some of our teachers. And by golly, they will cruise on any one of our ships that has that particular teacher on it. So look at a lot of different things. Of course, location. If you have never been to the ABC Islands, you may want to look for that one. Um, of course, 
a very, very popular uh, cruises, the Alaska cruises that we've been doing. And we have a couple that might even go from Canada to Hawaii. So, you know, there's a lot of different destinations that you could look at. And so look at the projects, look at the teachers, and look at the destinations. It's not just about how much money mm -hmm. did this cost for this trip. And you might even talk to Erin about asking her to price you out even maybe a, a junior suite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, mm -hmm. the cost difference between a balcony and a junior suite mm -hmm. just isn't that much. And it's it's a great upgrade to go yeah. from a balcony to a junior suite. For one thing, you get double points. Um, but you have a full bathroom, you have a tub, you know, there's just a lot of advantages. Plus you get to go to the coastal kitchen if you're on a, an Oasis class ship. So just consider all of those types of things when you're booking, uh, when you're looking at price, mm -hmm. um, and make your choice be something that you're really going to enjoy. And don't forget that there's also, you can set up a payment <clears throat> plan. That's so, true. You know, if you're dividing a cruise over 18 months and the price difference is only, you know, it's maybe $200, gosh, between that eight, I'm, I'm not good at math, I'll tell you that, but, you know, it would be a minimal amount difference per month mm -hmm. to really create a really fun experience. Yes, yes, it would. Um, the other thing that a mistake that a lot of times we make is not including travel insurance mm. in our package. You know, you guys, there's just really a lot of things that can happen on board a ship. There's a lot of reasons that travel insurance could come in handy. If you have to cancel because of a death in the family or an illness, a travel insurance will cover that. I believe it covers lost baggage, mm -hmm. um, just a number of things. And travel if insurance flight's delayed. A flight's delayed, exactly. And if you don't have travel insurance, you may find that you're jeopardizing your cruise. Mm -hmm. So it's not that expensive. It's not that much more. So we would encourage you, if you can, to look at the travel insurance and make sure you add that to your package. Absolutely. The next one's kind of funny, but it's only funny for those of us that have watched other people do this. <laughs> Personally, we have not done this, but you're asked to put your luggage out the night before, and that has to be out by usually about 10, 11 o'clock. And then the next morning when you get up, hopefully you have left out all the clothes that you're going to need to wear off the ship. We have witnessed people in their pajamas leaving the ship, walking down the We're gangway. happy they wore pajamas at <laughs> night. <laughs> Very true. So you need to make sure that you have a carry-off bag that you can put the night before clothes and, and your morning things in. So you are well prepared to leave the ship in your normal attire rather than your PJs. Yes. Um, you know, this next one, I'm going to let you talk about. It is your, <gasps> oh, your pro this is your thing. This so I'm going to let you talk about this one. Oh, this really is my thing. Mm -hmm. We at Stitch in Heaven work very closely with Royal Caribbean to make sure that we, all of our items get on board the ship. Of course, the biggie is the irons. We will provide each classroom with full-size irons. Those are in our shipment that gets <clears throat> taken onto the ship. You are allowed to bring a small craft iron. Number one, the big rule is no more than 400 watts. So that's the top line of how many watts that iron can pull. But your scissors, your rotary cutter, your rotary blades, and your travel iron need to be put in a baggie. This will all fit in a, like a gallon size Ziploc baggie. You'll be given your reservation number or a, a group number, and you have your cabin number. We give you all this information that you write with a Sharpie on that bag. You're gonna put that in the carry-on bag that you're boarding the ship with. 
your luggage has already been taken by a porter outside the port. They will take your big heavy bags on for you. But your carry-on bag or purse or whatever you want to walk onto the ship with, uh, that is where the prohibited items need to be in your baggie. Now, some people might say, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in my suitcase. Let me tell you what is likely to happen. Your suitcase is gonna be scanned. Security's gonna throw up a red flag because you've got an iron in there. We don't do irons on the ship. Therefore, your entire luggage is going to go down to security and will not be delivered to your room. You will be given a notice that you have to go to security to collect your luggage, and then you may or may not get your prohibited items delivered back to you. Generally, within a certain time period, but it may, have, may be on day two, we'll eventually get those back for you. But you don't have to do that at all if you will take that baggie and put it in your carry-on. Now security, it'll go through the scanner as you're uh, going to turn in your set sail pass and all the other things when you're checking in. But they may or may not take that bag from you. If they don't say anything to you, thankfully Royal Caribbean has notified them ahead of time that, hey, this group is a bunch of quilters coming on. They can do that. You may get a security guard that doesn't know that. And he says, oh no, you can't have that. They will take it. They will deliver it to the conference center for us. Our group coordinator will work with them and have that done. So you don't have to worry about it. It will just show up in the conference center. Your luggage gets to your room like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And it makes your first day so much smoother. And yeah, less stressful. So the mistake oh. is not putting your prohibited items in your carry-on. Yes. That is where it goes. If you put your prohibited items in your checked luggage, that is a mistake. <laughs> so please follow the instructions Info. that Dana is going to give you. We're going to remind you of this prior to your cruise, but please put those prohibited items in your carry-on as instructed. You'll be much happier. You will be much happier. Okay, the last thing we want to talk about is packing your suitcase at the maximum weight. That's, this is a mistake that a lot of people make. We are so happy, you know, when we get to the airport and our luggage weighs 49.5 pounds. Woohoo! And there, are, there is a lot of, you know, there are a lot of clothes we want to bring onto a cruise. Mm -hmm. However, you do need to remember that if you've purchased the uh, sail and sew pack from Stitch in Heaven, you can have up to three uh, packs of fabric mm -hmm. that are going to weigh probably five to 10 pounds in total. So also you're gonna probably buy a souvenir or two when you're in a port. Or three or four. Yeah, I mean, you just really, especially if you have to go to the shop in Cozumel that sells gauze. Oh yes. Uh, so just try to pack light. A lot of people make the mistake of packing to the max and that is not the way to do it. It's really better to bring two medium-sized bags mm -hmm. and pack them, you know, accordingly than it is. I know that sometimes you have to pay for that second bag. Sometimes you have to pay for the first one, but most of the time that's even cheaper than having to pay an overweight, Absolutely. overweight charge. So... So anyway, those are our 10 r mistakes that a lot of people make before coming onto a Stitch in Heaven quilting cruise that we want you to avoid so you can have a wonderful, wonderful vacation and time with us uh, sewing on the high seas. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add, Dana? Looking forward to getting on another ship and sailing and just enjoying having a wonderful 
not only vacation, but a wonderful instruction time with our fabulous teachers. Mm -hmm. And just... Yeah, so go to our website, uh, stitchinheaven.com, mm -hmm. and you'll see all of the cruises there that are planned uh, for the future, and we want to see you on one of them. Uh, we want to also remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we bring these types of informative uh, videos to you periodically, and you'll be notified when those are coming up. So we hope to see you soon, whether on a ship or in the store, or maybe even a retreat sometime in the future. So anyway, this is Deb and Dana from Stitch in Heaven, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.